We've all learned to love, really rely, on navigation devices powered by GPS. But honestly, they've only been half-baked until now. There's a new trend toward now doing GPS on connected devices that blend search, past preferences, and even your future activities into the task of getting you where you need to go. I'm Brian Cooley. In this episode of CNET Conversations, we visit one of the companies involved in this trend that also happens to have one of the fathers of GPS as its chief technology officer, Bob Renard. We met up with him at Telenav to get his view of the future through his knowledge of the past. So where are we? This is your knock. What is that? So we're in the Telenav Chief Network Operations Center. So the people that work in this office, in this area, and there's one similar to this in Shanghai, are responsible for keeping our connected services for Scout up and running. They can see how is the system behaving today versus how did it behave yesterday. So they can see if there's any trends they ought to be worried about. This is like SAC Omaha <laughs> 30 years ago. But <laughs> we don't have a big red <laughs> button, but yes. <laughs> You may know the name Telenav, but they're not as well known to consumers as Garmin, Magellan, or TomTom. Telenav has always focused on the software and algorithms that make GPS devices and services work. And while the firm dates back to the beginning of mass consumer use of GPS, CTO Bob Renard reaches way back before that. Take me back. GPS started when? When someone asks you, what's the date? What's the year? So GPS was a name change, and it was a build up by merging some things that the Air Force did under a Project 621B in 1969 mm -hmm. and a similar system that the Navy did called Timation in about the same time frame. But it wasn't until 1972 that the DOD said, let's put these two together and let's get on with it. The myth about GPS, and this goes back to the very core development back in the day, is that it's watching me. So many folks right. think that the satellite is up here looking down at you and tracking you. That's not how it works, is it? Not at all. So what the satellites do is they broadcast a message which describes what, at what time a signal is being broadcast. And if you know that time, you can also get some coefficients that say where would the satellite be at that time. And then the little receiver you have uses just that information from at least four satellites and it figures out where it is and it doesn't tell anything back to the satellites. It's the applications that bring the location information from the satellites together with a database of points of interest and a database of mapping to produce this product they all call the GPS. And so like in the case of our product like Scout, we do all that on the back end. We have the mapping data and the points of interest data that can be dynamically accessed from your phone as opposed to being resident on it, which allows us to keep Scout up to date, much more so than a, a locked up product. You know, it's funny, it occurred to me that maybe this shouldn't be called Scout, but Sniper, because it wants to put a bullet in the head of three distinct navigation estates you use today. First of all, they have Scout.me. They would like you to use that instead of, let's say, Google Maps or MapQuest, because that's where you would go on the computer to find things to share locations and such. Then, of course, a lot of us are going to do navigation on our phone. It's the new portable navigation device. That's where you've got this Scout app. This phone app can blend the functionality of a weather app and a mapping app, maybe a place recommendation app. You know who I'm talking about. It also memorizes your home and work destinations and always tells you how far you are from them in current traffic. And then, of course, once you put the phone in your pocket and get in the car, that's where Scout Automotive is going to transfer control to the dash, whatever the interface is, simple text or full LCD, and then can take advantage of the vehicle's voice command as well as do things in a contextual way that is safer and more efficient for while you're driving. I might want to go to the theater or go to a sports event or go to a music venue. So Scout.me, our companion website for Scout, allows you to go there and find what's going on around you, pick one you like, and then navigate to it later. And also from your Scout application, you can share it with those other people you'd like to join you at that event. Now, Telenav Scout is part of a major shift that I've been awaiting in what is loosely termed the GPS business. You see, navigation without search just isn't making sense to me anymore. And soon, navigation without personal history, preferences, and even prediction will seem antiquated and laborious to use. So watch Telenav, Android services, Apple's new efforts in nav and location, and Microsoft's expression of all this in their new blended Windows platform if you want to follow the major players in how GPS is evolving. However that shakes out, I can't help but see a big upside for all of us. For CNET Conversations, I'm Brian Cooley. Thanks for watching.